coming in and hello to everybody who will watch the playback my name is Rue Monera Holland Bay but you can just call me Rue okay and I want to welcome you guys um, to this week's episode um, of Tuesday's Tea which is titled y'all I got my notes and stuff because today's um, just quick message because I wasn't even going, we, we weren't even going to have, um, Tuesday's tea today. Um, but in my, you know, going about my day, there was a message, um, that I know that is most definitely resonating with me. I know that we have, um, a new moon coming up in Gemini in a couple days. Uh, and not only is it a new moon, we also have a, a eclipse. Okay, that's happening as well. I believe it's a solar eclipse, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's a solar eclipse that's also happening um, as well um, on the 10th, okay? And so, we're coming into that energy. I'm sure that a lot of you guys um, are feeling the energy and feeling the effects um, of everything that's happening uh, within the world, especially everything that's happening planetary-wise. Um, our last full moon was absolutely uh, powerful and, and for myself, I think, so significant. Um, last, the last uh, full moon that we had um, on the 26th. Hello to everybody coming in. Hello to everybody. Hi, Jada. Hi, Ronnie. I love you. Um, uh, when, with our full moon that we just had on the 26th of last month, uh, that eclipse was hitting at the south node, uh, and those of you who had the chance to tune in with us uh, for our um, Art of Ritual uh, Full Moon and Sagittarius video, you guys uh, will have walked through the core cutting ritual that we had and uh, had a chance to really tune in 
uh, to the message that came forth and my sister uh, Shalom Gael also popped on uh, and shared a powerful message that really um, coincided with the night and with the energy of just releasing and not only releasing, uh, but really dealing with your past lives, you know, but whether it be those that, you know, you're, you're, you're spiritually dealing with your past lives or you were really releasing the ghost of who you were, right, in order to become who you truly desire yourself to be uh, as we move forward you know, through this world, you know, as we move forward throughout the years, we're really um, in a place of where spirit really has us truly defining ourselves and truly getting uh, a hold on where we are individually, you know, as it relates to our finances, as it relates to, you know, how we take care of ourselves, how we honor ourselves, engaging in our self-care rituals, you know, really building true spiritual practices and rituals around you that are tailored to you and how you move and operate in your everyday life and not trying um, to focus so much on how everybody else outside of you is doing. Uh, this this last um, full moon was really calling us to deal with the ghost of our past, you know, uh, really so that we can release that stuff because now... We have this new moon on the 10th uh, that is sitting at the north node, right? And there is just a experience or a mirror message that came through uh, as I was getting out of the shower tonight um, and getting ready to come on to Tuesday and do Tuesday C. You know, we were just getting in the house and stuff. And so Mrs. Holland is around. She's working uh, in the in the um, office getting some stuff done for work um, and so you guys may see her pop in you may not see her pop in but she is around uh, and she's working um, and so we were just getting in from our day but there's a message that came through that really really resonated and it was a ritual uh, that I really felt myself being engaged in as I was coming out of the shower um, and I really thought that it was really fitting to the message on today uh, as it relates to our Tuesday's Tea episode, okay? And so I want you guys to feel free to ask any questions. If you have questions throughout the episode, like I said, this is not going to be a very long episode. But if there are some things that come up that you feel like you want to share... Uh, how was your day? I hope that all of you have been has, having an amazing day. Uh, even if your day has been trying or challenging, I hope that today's Tuesday's Tea episode really allows you to release uh, your day if it has been hectic uh, and help to give you some sort of rebalancing uh, as you go into your awake and rest so that you're able to wake up tomorrow I'm feeling effective, feeling joyful, feeling energized, and feeling ready to, to take on uh, the day, okay? And so, welcome to Tuesday's Tea, everybody. I'm going to ask our famous question, uh, what is in your world? If you guys are sipping on something, even if it's not Holland Spices products, let me know what you guys are sipping on uh, and how that brew has either been aiding you in your day um, or, or has been aiding you just as we've been moving through this energetic energy. Let me know what brews you guys have been sipping on and how it's been aiding you. Today, I am honestly sipping on a lot of water. <laughs> Guys, guys, the desert is seriously, um, how do I say, no joke, okay? The desert has humbled me um, in more ways than one, uh, but the desert has, has also been really teaching, teaching us how to slow down, okay? How to slow down. And how to be very intentional about our energy uh, and about the times that we, we're exerting our energy and, and really um, taking the time to, to just be present and rest as well, right? And so I also feel like as we come into uh, this new moon, I also feel like that that's also really relevant, uh, making sure that we're drinking lots of water, 
right? The one number one thing that water is really going to be aiding us in is really keeping our bodies hydrated, one, right? And also helping us to flush out everything that doesn't belong, right? And so I know for myself, I've I've never had a really good habit of drinking water, as, as much water as I should. And so now that we are out here in Arizona, um, I have been humbled, you know, and really challenged uh, to stop playing with the element of water, <laughs> you know, and to really start taking in more water into my diet. And ever since I've been doing so, I really have felt the difference. Um, and when I go outside, I feel the difference in, you know, um, the depletion of how, how quickly my body de depletes, you know, when I'm drinking my water. So I'm sipping on some water. Um, and I also have my juice over there because, you know, Rue loves some juice. And so I got my juice on the side. And I'm drinking that because it makes me feel happy. Okay? It makes me feel happy. Um, and it makes me feel like I'm giving myself some uh, pleasure. Right? And so today is all, this today's topic um, with Tuesday's Tea is uh, worship while you wait. Okay? And, and it says, it goes on to say that I, wait, I say, okay, wait. And today's um, Tuesday's Tea topic was just really inspired by um, this song that happened to uh, come, you know, pop on my, my Instagram feed when I was looking for a song uh, for one of, one of the pictures that I was posting and I came across um this gospel group, okay, guys, this gospel group, I grew up in church, and so my roots and my connection with gospel music, I feel like will always remain uh, and always be a, be a part of me and what I'm learning to do now through uh, the art of music, Mancy, right? Music, Mancy, you know, as I go through this journey of really coming back into the relationship with music, um, I'm going to be able to really start to begin to share with you guys uh, Music Mancy, right? And how Music Mancy was given to me and, and the understanding uh, of what Music Mancy is, uh, which is simply being able to use music in order to edify ourselves, right? Using music in a way to where we understand that we're using ritual and we know how to use this ritual, right? And so this is in turn going to teach us you know, how to really understand frequency, right? And and even if a song is speaking to you and maybe the words are tricky, uh, through the art of understanding music, Mancy, you are going to learn that you are you can really take any song. There was one saying that I learned when I was in church, um, uh from this pastor from this church who was, you know, really trying to do Christian dumb in a different way. Um, and he was really teaching uh, how to find God in everything. And there was something about that phrase that really sparked and changed my perception of how um, I looked for God. You know, how I understood God, how I communicated with God, how I communicated with this universe. You know, that one phrase really rooted um the belief in myself that I could see God and be able to identify God in the trees, right? And the birds, right? And the water and the animals that may cross your path, right? And the music that, you know, may catch your attention and that may really speak to you during a certain period of time, right? Be it the people that you encounter on your everyday journeys, right? Everything, in my opinion, is a message and this constant communication uh, with the universe with around us. You know, everything is spirit. We're never not operating in the spirit realm. You know, we're never not moving and creating in the spirit realm. Every time we're, we're, we're engaging in activity here in this realm, we are creating worlds that are outside of us, worlds that we're completely unaware of, that we're coming back, worlds that we're coming back into the remembrance of, right? And so finding God in everything will really teach you to be present with what's happening around you. 
and it's going to it's going to act as an anchor right when you feel lost and when you feel like you can't find your way or your identity you know as the world is consistently uh going through a shifting process right uh, the world as a collective is going through you know a process of dying and rebirthing itself this planet is dying you know and rebirthing itself you know the air around us the atmosphere around us is dying and rebirthing itself okay and the the people how we interact with each other is dying and rebirthing itself okay and in our interpersonal lives the same cyclical cycles are happening right and right now, it's, in my opinion, it's really a time uh, for us to really become present uh, with the spiritual aspect of ourselves, right? We've operated um, on this mundane, physical uh, world that brought us pleasure, right? And it's not that we're not going to continue to operate in those ways. I feel like that energy and the way in which we do things and how we do things, how we move forward and how we engage in ritual, everything is being transmuted, right? And transformed in order to take on a different form, right? In order to elevate us as we're elevating, right? And so you can look at that and liken that same understanding uh, to music, right? And to what music meant he is. And so there was this gospel song uh, that came across my path by this gospel group called Elevation Worship. Uh, and the song had went on to, you know, really speak about, you know, not believing in the fairy tales, you know, and, and that I liken that to getting ourselves out of the illusions, right? The illusions that have been created around us via people, uh, be it our jobs, be it um, how we perceive the world around around us, uh, these uh, the 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 delusions, right? That we sit in, that that we think are real, and that we think are serving us, but really on an intrinsic level, are really doing more harm than what is doing good. And I believe that that was another reason why uh, that north note, that that south node energy, and that that full moon and eclipse energy in Sagittarius was really hitting at that south node on the um, full moon that we had on the 26th, really getting us to cut cords, right? To cut the tethers, the things that we are attached to in unhealthy ways, right? Our identity, our friends, our families, right? Sh stripping ourselves down to the bare minimum so that we're truly able to find our most authentic voice. Those last couple months, I know in a lot of my readings and a lot of the collective readings that I was doing, um, Spirit was really dealing with us um, as it relates w related to finding our voice, you know, finding our most authentic voice authentic voice and finding um the most authentic way to communicate that right but to communicate that not in a way to do harm not in a way to condescend or to put down but in a way to still communicate with love and with compassion right and so this song really kind of um has been sitting with me for I want to say like the last, guys, I'm just pulling up my notes because I have a lot here. Give me one second, y'all. Here we go. Um, because I pulled up the lyrics of the song because I really wanted to go through them because I felt like it really had a root message. Um, and it really spoke to the scripture that I gave you guys um, in the caption of this week's Tuesday's tea poster. Um, and the song just really, it says, said that I, I don't believe in fairy tales, right? And that's just getting away and breaking away from the delusions and the illusions that we have in our lives. Like, like whatever that may be and whatever levels you may find your illusions in, right? And it's saying that we've outgrown them, right? That's us really cutting off and leaving 
all that spirit had been dealing with us from last year and really forcing a change in, in, in every area where we had grown too comfortable, right? We've outgrown those things, right? And even that, that last week, the last month's um, full moon was really telling us that our comforts weren't going to serve us in this season and that, you know, where we were going and how, where we were ascending to was really going to require us to challenge ourselves, right? And so the song was, was really was saying that I, I've outgrown those fairy tales. I, I've outgrown those past lives. You, you understand? Y'all understand what I'm saying? I, I've grown uh, the comforts that used to that that pushed me forward and gave me motivation. Okay, and then the song went on to say that I'm gonna wait on you, right? And then when you listen to the song and the aspect of how they're think how they're singing it, they're singing it to a deity, you know, giving worship and edification to this deity, telling the deity that, you know, no matter what's going on around me, no matter how the world is shifting, I'm going to wait on you, right? And at the same time, spirit is really pulling us and taking us up off of our knees. Like I said, I've been saying for a few months that Jesus took himself down off the cross and gave us the command to get up off our knees, right? And to really put ourselves back into the position of being the physical living walking manifestation of of god which is the i am when we look at um, the metaphysical definition of these words right this is why etymology and really um understanding that, that what we're reading is important as we move forward because it's going it's going to be the it's going to be in the words especially for us melanated people that shifts the perception and how we perceive God being outside of us versus God being us, being I am that I am, okay? We could go into the etymology of Jesus Christ and all of that stuff. I've done that already. Uh, if you guys go back and look um, at other, at, at so many other, other, other videos that I've done, uh, I've gone into the etymology of Jesus Christ and how these words really break down when you look at the metaphysical definition of these words, these uh, definitions point you back to you. They take you back to dealing with yourself. Because when you pull everything away, when you strip away, you know, all of the people that you're sitting under and learning from, that you guys sit and listen to on social media, when you strip everything away, when you, at the end of the day, when you put your phone down, you turn the TV off, all you have to deal with and, ha and, and be with is yourself. And that is simply what spirit is trying to elevate us to, right? The divine mother, right, is, 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 even, is forcing us, is first of all, pulling down structures, right? And, and putting her um, daughters back into their rightful positions, right? The divine mother has risen back onto this planet and has taken her place right so if the divine mother is get, is in order then we have to to begin to do the work to also get ourselves in order right and so this song and today's topic today is really to call us back into a place of turning our worship outside of us and turning it back onto the self giving worship and edification back onto the self because that is what is going to elevate and ascend you that is what is going to teach you that you're worthy enough of the ascension that's taking place on this planet okay and so the song a part of the song says that i'm going to wait on you right that you is yourself we have to be courageous and brave enough to stop waiting on on things and people outside of us to give us the keys or to give us the answers to the things that are happening and going on in our lives. These planetary energies, whether you take yourself into extensive study of astrology or not, that is your choice and your business. But what you need to know is that these planetary energies are influencing everything that we do. So even if you do a basic level of just understanding your, your natal chart is going to benefit you as we move forward. Because this is what the world is becoming. We're in the spiritual. 
And however that resonates and translates to you. And anything that is not moving in accordance to the mother is being snatched. I've been saying it. And I'm going to continue to say it. And the Divine Mother is calling us back into the um, overstanding, the understanding, the understanding, whatever word you want to attach to it, to really take it, taking the understanding that God is you. And if you, and if it's difficult for you guys to come into the overstanding of that, worshiping yourself is going to help you understand it. This worship can be a meditation. This worship can be building an altar to yourself and finding music, finding songs, and, and really incorporating the art of music, Mancy, right? Which is really turning these songs, taking these songs and ritualizing them in a way to where they are edifying you. You are pouring worship into yourself. You are telling yourself how worthy you are, how worthy you are. You are telling yourself how much you how much you show up, how much you never fail yourself, how you give yourself strength to keep going. Yes, there is a cosmic force that is ultimately for, uh, uh, influencing us and giving us power and giving us our gifts and our ability. Yes, there is a greater um, cosmic universe that is assisting us, but we are that universe a physical walking manifestation of that cosmic grand universe we are the wombs that birth out of that universe we come out of the cosmic waters of that universe we exist in the cosmic waters of this universe, right? Every day that we wake up, every day that we open our mouth. And what I love about this song is that it, it is instilling within you the desire and the courage to wait on yourself. When you don't know where to go, when you don't know what moves to make, wait and sit and be present with yourself. And, the, and the, what I love most about this song is one of the root messages in, uh, that comes across in, the, in this song is that uh, he says, it's not about the waiting, it's about what you do in the waiting. It's about your mind in the waiting. It's about your posture as you're waiting. It's about the cords that you're cutting while you're in waiting. For whatever it is that you're waiting about, it can be materialistic, it could be in waiting of your spiritual gifts, it could be, you know, in waiting of the cords that you're cutting to finally show um, a physical manifestation that they're gone, and whatever it is that you're waiting for. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so as I was in the shower, I was thinking about this song, and y'all, I love really hot showers. That's just my thing. I don't know if it's because I'm a cancer, um, but I just love really, really hot showers. <laughs> and so every time that I take a shower, I can almost guarantee that, the, that anybody who walks into the bathroom, when they open the door, there's going to be a puff of smoke that's going to come out, right? And so what I want y'all to do is one before we get into this mirror message that I'm going to take y'all through now that I'm done my spiel. Um, I want to do a um, little sample meditation with us. Um, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful friend and sister. I love her so much tomorrow. My beautiful, beautiful friend, T. Uh, this is my birthday month. And so she sent me a beautiful symbol. And so I have been using this symbol every single day since it's come. Um, 
and really connecting with the symbol. And this bowl is in uh, the frequency of E, the letter E. Uh, and this uh, frequency is connected to the third eye, right? And so I'm about to give you guys and impart into you guys a message, a mirror message that came to me after I came out of my shower. And it's all going to make the song make sense that I'm going to end Tuesday's tea with. Um, but before I do so, I just want to balance us and where we are. Uh, maybe you had a long day. Maybe you find it hard to focus on the message or connect. We're going to take a moment, me with you, us in connection and energy. I'm going to take a moment to balance us in our energy with your permission. And if I do not have your permission, feel free to jump off. And that's okay, too. I don't feel no kind of way, I promise y'all. And so I want you guys to find your center. Feel free to close your eyes. Um, and to take in uh, the symbol meditation before we jump into our mirror message. And hello to everybody coming in. Uh, welcome to Tuesday's Tea. Thank you, Grace. Awesome. Okay, everybody. Maybe you haven't had the time to really catch your breath today. As the frequencies move through your bodies, I want you guys to find your breath and to find your center and breathe deeply. And I want you guys to release the energy of the day. Release your troubles, release your worries, release your frustrations, release your doubts. Release your past, okay? As we go into this journey, you guys don't need to see my face. You only need to hear my voice. And as we go into 
this uh, mirror message that I have for you guys. I want you guys to close your eyes if you come down. From that uh, sound bowl meditation. I want you guys to close your eyes. And I want you guys to relax yourself. And I want you guys to take yourself. Into meditation. And into your mind. And into your imagination. And I invite you all to take this journey with me. I want you to see yourself having just come out of a very beautiful and relaxing shower. The shower was hot. You can feel the steam all around you. You can taste it. You can see it. You can touch it. You can smell it. You can feel the water beating up against your skin. You can feel the pores on your skin opening. So you can really feel the burn and the sting of the water. But what you're paying most attention to is the steam or the fog that looks like it's building all around you. It's billowing so thick that you honestly no longer can even see the shower head. You just see the fall. And as you're in this fall, I want you to really be thinking about yourself. How do you feel? How does this fog make you feel? Does it make you feel safe? Does it make you feel frightened? The lights are off. So it's honestly only darkness around you. What do you feel like in this moment? What thoughts come to mind in this darkness? What fears come to mind in this darkness? What habits, what addictions, what failures come to mind in this fog? How does the fog make you feel? Does it make you feel weak? Are you hot? You feel almost overwhelmed with heat, like you can't really make it too much longer. You can't quite catch your breath because the water and the steam it's so hot. It feels almost like fire. Like you're showering in fire. And in this fire, you feel a purging. You feel a purging to your skin. And you can smell the smoke. You can see it in a fog all around you. And you can no longer see your way. You can no longer think your way out of it. All you see is the fog. All you feel is the weight. All you feel is the heat. All you feel is the steam. You turn your shower off and you prepare to walk out of the door. And as you're walking out of the door, you open the shower and you can barely see any of the bathroom because the smoke, the fog has billowed everywhere. But you make your way to the mirror. In the mirror, you can see the mirror because it's close. Even though the room is dark, you can still see a glimmer, a slither an illusion of an image. And you know you're the only one in the room. You're the only one in this bathroom. 
And so you know this image, this reflection that's staring back at you in the mirror is you. How do you feel in this moment not being able to see your reflection? Being unsure what she looks like, what he looks like, what his eyes look like, what he sounds like. What he feels like. What his lips look like. What, is, what, is, what her crown looks like. What her skin. How does her skin shine. None of this you can see. You can only see the illusion. And as you stand in front of this mirror. I want you. To see the shadow and take note of the shadow of you. Much like the shadow of me. Because you guys can't see me too well anymore. You see a shadow of me. The illusion of me. Okay. And just as the smoke is beginning to clear. Just as the smoke is beginning to clear its way. There an opportunity presents itself that before this image reappears in front of you as you're seeing little glimmers of her, little glimmers of him, it's still foggy so you can only see an outline. You're still unsure of what the visual face looks like. You can only see little lights, little glimmers of light, reflection, little glimmers of reflection. And as the fog still billows around you and is showing moments of light, moments of brightness, a decision must be made. A decision can be made. You get to decide what image appears before you as the smoke around you clears, as the fog around you clears this new moon and gemini is presenting an opportunity for you to decide this eclipse hitting at the north node is presenting an opportunity for you to decide what will this image look like once the fall clears who will she be how will she speak what would her lips look like how will her crown sit on her head? What would her wisdom be like? How will his perception change? How will his mannerisms be? What is the structure of the face that, that you're going to see before you as the fog clears? As you stepped out of the shower, you've just finished washing and cleansing yourself. Clearing and washing away everything that doesn't belong. And you stand in the mirror before yourself, waiting for the image of you to appear. And as this image is beginning to appear, an opportunity presents itself to you to decide who you are going to be on the other end of the clearing. Who you are going to be, how you are going to act, how you are going to perceive the world. You get to decide your thoughts as the clearing around you is happening, as the fog around you is happening. You get to decide the God that you're going to be. You get to decide the creation that you're going to will. It's a physical manifestation around you. You get to decide what dies and rebirths around you and for you. As the clearing of the fall and the image of who you are becoming is subtly beginning to show itself. Who are you going to be? And as you are deciding in the waiting 
you are going to worship and edify yourself. Because it is in your worship. It was in your worship came the highest way of saying thank you to the deity that you were worshiping. To the deity that you were thinking. Worship was the highest form that you could give to a deity to sit at its feet and to tell it how great you are, how wonderful you are, how accommodating you are, how never failing you are, how almighty you are. While you are in the waiting, you are in the worship of yourself because it is in the worship of yourself that is going to bring you the ascension that is on and meeting you in the North Node as we come into this new moon on the 10th. While you are in the waiting of the revealing of who you are as you ascend, as you are in the waiting and the clearing of the fog of having not been in the overstanding of who you were becoming, of not overstanding why the things that were falling away needed to fall away. As those understandings, as, as that clarity is coming into place, as you are in the waiting of the reveal of who you are, as you ascend to your north node, it is in the worship, it is in the position of worship, that we must be the worship unto ourselves, taking the worship outside of us from giving it to a deity, from imparting it to something, waiting for something outside of us. We're going to wait on ourselves. We're going to stand in the gap and in the waiting of ourselves, trusting that we are coming through for ourselves, that we are on the way to saving ourselves. It is in your worship that is going to prove who you are becoming. It is in your worship that is going to ascend you to where you need to be. And that is why I loved this mirror message because this, this mirror message is telling you to wait on yourself even as you worry, wait on yourself, trusting that you are creating the solution out of your imagination, out of your creativity, out of your godhood, out of your own ori. You are creating the solutions to yourself. You are creating the solutions to your need out of your godhood. Not that you're surrendering under a deity, under your own godhood, and under the worship of you. I want to share a story with you guys. Because this planetary energy is hitting for myself. Most definitely, especially in the areas of communication. This area is hitting, this energy is hitting in my seventh house. Um, as well as my second house. Um. And I have Leo at my moon, at my heart. And so this energy is really dealing with me, especially how I communicate. Not, how my commun not only how my communication goes out into the world and how the words that I say falls on the people around me and how the words that I communicate make the people around me feel, but also how I accept communication how I understand and perceive the communication that's coming into me as Gemini, right? And so myself and my wife's um, Mars is in Cancer, right? And every, every Mercury retrograde, right? So we have the text Mercury retrograde also into this energy, okay? And so... Um, Every time Mercury retrograde comes around, uh, she and I always have a blow up that 
forces us to come up higher and to experience some form um, of elevation, not only in how we deal with each other and how we communicate, communicate with each other, but also how we deal with um, and communicate with ourselves, right? And so just as Mercury retrograde does, um, every time Mercury retrograde comes into play, we have a clash. And so this Mercury retrograde really had both of us really reestablishing our communication with each other and establishing our boundaries, reestablishing our boundaries. And not only how we uh, get to operate with each other, but also how we operate within ourselves. Um, and so uh, my wife was able to share some things with me um, and her fears around how she communicates with me and my reaction and how she communicates with me, you know. And so this mirror reflection, you know, because she is the reflection of me. And so this mirror reflection that she was showing back to me really had me questioning um, if I always wanted her to be in fear of being able to speak her truth. And for many of us, um, the battle is within our communication. Is in how we communicate to the world around us. Is in how we communicate with ourselves. Right? And most of the time, we're really fighting because we don't feel heard. We're battling because we're trying to feel heard. We're trying to feel understood. Or maybe seen. Or maybe validated. Right? And so we clashed. We put distance between us. And so we, and it left us in a place of having to do shadow work all day. And so, after being in shadow work the whole day and having to deal with myself, having to deal with my communication, having to deal uh, with who I've been, how I've communicated, you know, having to deal with past reflections, having to deal with past hurts. You know, this mirror reflection and this clash and this Mercury Mercury retrograde uh, really had me in the shadow work of myself, right? And so even that shows you that even God needs rebalancing and resharpening. Even God needs retuning. Even God is never done learning. Even God is never done elevating and transmuting and transforming and dying to a form of itself and becoming a whole different version in order to continue to ascend to its highest self. Right? And so after coming down from shadow work, spirit had me go into the worship of myself. And that's really where the mother has really had me at. Uh, dealing with in my own spiritual journey is really going back into the worship of the self, res re uh, resurrecting the, the the worship temples of the goddess, the womb of the divine mother. That is my call. And so after I finished my shadow work, spirit called me into worship of myself. And so I sat and I created a temple with the intention of creating a sacred temple unto myself and the comforts of my own home, creating a safe space around me in front of the mirror. Again, mirror work. Gemini is also the twin. It's the twins. The twins, we all have that. We are the twin. Before you meet the outside versions of yourself, you should always understand that you meet the inner version of yourself first. Always. First and foremost. Right? And so as you're in this Gemini, coming into this, this new moon in Gemini, also understand that you're dealing with your own twin. With the duality of your own self. And so mirror work is needed for you to see yourself. 
right? And so again, Spirit had me doing mirror work, even in worship. And so you, I turned on my music, music that spoke to me again in music, Mancy. Okay, and worship unto myself, and I danced, and I moved energy, and I and I did ritual by fire, releasing by fire, even things that I thought that I released, and that and I and not not even that I thought that I released, but I that I released even during the full moon on the twenty sixth, that eclipse energy, releasing then, re releasing those same things because it didn't just go away that night. Is residual energy, is residue. And so taking a moment to continue to release that energy because what's showing up for you during this new moon is showing up for a reason. What is showing up for you during this, this Mercury retrograde is showing up for a reason. Everything ain't about nobody hating on you. Some stuff is spirit trying to see, get you to see yourself. The cyclical cycles the the and patterns and pathologies of yourself trying to get you to, to see the breakdown of your own communication grace baby if you want to come in feel free baby i saw you send a request come in if you want to feel free anybody who wants to come in feel free but seeing the duality and the things that need to be worked on within yourself. Right? And so that is what I loved about this song. And that is what I loved about taking the moment to ritualize and to be in worship of myself after I came down from shadow work that day. Right? And that releasing. And I danced in, the, in, in that mirror. I danced and I looked at my body. I touched my body. I drank wine. This wonderful wine that me and Mrs. Holland love. And, 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 I, and I doused the room in our hibiscus honey for pleasure and love on myself. And I drank the wine and ritual unto myself and worship unto myself. And I worshiped myself and I released for myself, on behalf of myself, in ritual and to myself, in the mirror. And by the time that I woke up the next day, I felt so light. I felt so free. I felt so open because I worshiped while I was in waiting for the situation that was happening between me and my wife to clear it's not about you waiting. It's about what you're doing in the waiting. It's about the actions that are taking place in the waiting. I will worship in the waiting of the becoming of myself. I will worship in the waiting as I ascend to the highest aspect of myself. I will worship in the waiting as I shift and transform and die and rebirth, I will worship. I will worship as my home is transforming around me and becoming what I need it to be. I will worship unto myself. I will wait for myself for the answers. I will wait for myself for the solutions. I will wait within myself for the solutions. I will wait within myself for the salvation. I will wait. And if you're gonna wait on anything outside of you, you're gonna wait on the divine cosmic mother because she is risen and she is who calls us back into reconciliation, back unto ourselves. I want to read the scripture that I attached to the um, topic on today for Tuesday's Tea. And the scripture comes out of Isaiah 40, 
the scriptures that I'm going to be reading, I believe, starts at the verse um, 28. You guys can go and look up the actual scripture on your own time. For myself and for my personal mission, I've been charged to reteach how we understand and use the Bible. Because it is a spiritual tool that has a lot of spiritual, of our spiritual information within it. The issue is how it's been taught to us and how it's been given to us. And so one of the missions that is attached to my life and to my light is the reteaching of how we understand the Bible and putting back at the head who belongs, which is the triple goddess, the mother, the maiden, and the crone. It was the mother that birthed this plane of existence and every other plane of existence into manifestation. It was the divine mother who stood in the ethers and said, let there be light. It was the primordial mother who stood at the beginning of time and said, let there be light. And it is the divine cosmic mother that is calling us into the death of ourselves in order for us to be reborn. And so the scripture that is attached to this week's Tuesday's Tea episode goes as, we are changing, I am changing the word Lord to the word light and the word he to the word she. And the scripture reads, so I, so I'm sorry guys, so wait on the light. Wait on the light. Wait on the light. Hi, my grace, baby. I'm just taking a moment to read the scripture, okay? And then, oh, and wait. Then... Am I am I live with you? Yes, will you live? Hi, honey. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so not... Funny. It must I have been me. You, I had put you in my bra because I'm at our, I'm at our tree. Oh, well then, well, then stay there because it must be meant for you to be here. And so everything happens for a reason. Okay. And so I'm going to read the scripture. Okay. Uh, we are coming. The scripture is out of Isaiah's 40. I believe the scripture that I'm starting at is uh, verse 28. And so the scripture reads, So wait on the light. Wait on the light. She will renew your strength. So I say, wait on the light wait on the light she will renew your strength so i say wait on the light wait on the light she will renew your strength she will renew your strength no matter where you are no matter what you're going through, the light that we are waiting on is the light of ourselves, the light of our own Ashe, the light of our own Ori, whatever you want to call it. The mother is giving us the command to wait on ourselves, to focus on our own light. To focus and to, and to die to what we need to die to in order for us, in order for our light to shine as brightly as it needs to shine because the world is becoming a dark place. It's becoming a dark place. Grace, what I'll ask you since you're here and everything happens for a reason, that's how I feel. And so I'm going to ask you, because you've been sitting with us here on today's topic, uh, and I want to ask you, 
what is your posture as you're in the waiting of who you're becoming? Right. What, what was what's the question? What is your posture? What are you doing as you're in the waiting of who you're becoming? Um Jesus. I'm taking the time to really listen to myself and really trust myself. That's what I've been doing. Um, and I've been really lately, really been forgiving myself. And even when phrase, I think our phone is breaking up. It was the forgiveness for me. It was the forgiveness for me. And so even even if we lose her, she said a, a, a word right there. As she's in her waiting, I think we lost her. As she's in her waiting, as she's in the waiting of who she's becoming, as she's in the waiting of who she's ascending to, leaving the south node and ascending into the north node, as she's in the waiting, she's forgiving herself. That right there is a word. That right there is a freaking word. Because just forgiving the decisions that you made, just, and it's okay, Grace. It's okay, my love. It seems like you lost connection. It's okay. Just, you said a mouthful, sis. And the waiting, and you're waiting, you are learning to forgive yourself as you're waiting to become who you need to be. That was a mouthful, right? Because just by doing the work of forgiving the choices and the decisions that you've made, that alone will spark and cause the light that was that's within you to shine even brighter. Go ahead, Grace. You said that you were, as you're in the waiting of who you're becoming, you're learning right. to forgive yourself. I'm sorry. Listen, I don't know what's going on with my phone and stuff. Like, it has been haywire. It's okay. But, um, yeah, I have been, like, really, it's odd how gentle and how graceful I've been with myself. Wow. Because I'm able to look back on the relationships that I've had and uh, laugh, you know what I'm saying, and, wow. and come to the understanding that, like, I didn't know what I know now. So I can't hold myself accountable, really, for what I know now because I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I yes. was really in the dark yes. trying to survive. And so as I move from surviving to thriving, I can't, like, you can hold yourself accountable for the lessons, but you can't really judge yourself harshly because, like, you didn't know. Like, I didn't know. Oh. You know oh. what I'm saying? And That's so I honestly, Shug, I honestly, like, didn't mean I put you in my bra on the side that my key is not on. So I didn't even mean to like request you twice. I just ended up at our tree today. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? Tonight. And like this is where I am in front of our tree. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at her. You know what I'm saying? So like in the dark and there's nobody here but me. Right. And I don't know, like I'm just grateful for the journey. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know. And as I'm coming into the understanding and the understanding, if those are the terms you want to use, yeah. that, like, I am God, like, it's empowering, but it causes me to love myself more. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. like, <coughs> excuse me, like, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know how powerful I was. I, I am. Yeah. I didn't know that stuff. Yeah. You know what it's I'm saying? So, so as I sit with the tree that we, that I call grandma, 
Ooh. you know what I'm saying, full of wisdom and grace. Like, yeah, I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. And I that, didn't know. And, and I think that that's the most innocent um, declaration, I think, to really give to this this divine cosmic universe is is that you didn't know and we didn't know you know and that's the beauty of the fall clearing not having clarity on what's happening around us you know not having clarity of the things that we didn't know and not that the that the times that we didn't know weren't serving us because they were uh but sometimes it can make you feel like your life is, you know, out of out of focus, you know, or unbalanced or chaotic and chaotic, you know, and chaotic. And and some would say that this universe is chaotic. And in the chaos, you still find order. No matter how chaotic the universe is, the planets get to where they need to get to when they need to get, get there without any type of um uh, distractions or obstacles and even if the obstacles present, present itself, these planets, planets know where they need to be and when they need to be there and I feel that this is ultimately where spirit, especially as we come into this new moon in Gemini uh, is really in this eclipse is really um, charging us to be in, in the mind of knowing where we're going as the fall is in and, and as you're in the waiting of who you, be, who you becoming, you must incorporate the element of worship. And right. Education and your daily practices, especially if you're doing um, consistent shadow work, you know, because doing consistent shadow work without replenishing and without rebuilding everything that you're stripping away can really leave you ultimately on empty you know, and in a, and a worse off place than where, than where you were when you first started on this journey. Right. You know, and so worshiping yourself is an act of self-care. It you is. Know, it is. It's, it is the act of pouring into yourself, back into yourself. You know? And so worshiping, ensuring that we are incorporating the element of worship while we're in the waiting of who we're becoming going from our self node ascending into our north. It is what you do in that waiting period. You're not in complaining, okay? You're not in thinking about, you know, how hard things are for you. You are in gratefulness while you are in the waiting. You are in the act of forgiving yourself as, as uh, my sister Grace so powerfully articulated. Make, making sure that you're doing the work of forgiving the decisions that you make. You know, the actions that you've taken, the tethers that you created, the responsibilities that you've taken on, the perception, perceptions and the pathologies and the stories that you told yourself. That's true. My, yeah. nor, my south node is in Libra. And so it's my all about, theology. like, where did my knife go? Oh, here we go. So I don't leave the house without protection at night but um it's about like putting others before you you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and like i'm learning to put myself first so when i start the morning in worship unto myself like i'm starting the day putting grace first you know what i'm saying and it causes me to like uh be in a different place so as I go about the day I'm not worried about like how this person feels I'm worried about how grace feels Come on, and sis. how this worry and how this bothers grace and how this is going to affect grace Come you know on, what I'm sis. saying and my north node is in Aries which is the a cardinal sign which is the first cardinal sign which is the leader you Come see on, what I'm sis. saying so I cause myself being by me putting grace first in the North Node energy, I'm the leader in everything that I do. You and know our what I'm saying? And it right shifts everything. Yes. And and your, our, our South Node and North Nodes are the same. And so I completely relate to, you know, the action of living a life trying to please the world. You know, trying to be likable. You know, trying to 
shift and transform. And I think, uh, in my opinion, I think that cancers uh, have the highest art of and the ability to be able to shape shift. You know, having the ability to transform, I feel like we shape shift throughout the day. I feel like we shape shift even during our our, our awakened rest. Because um, we're the mother. Yes. So we don't have no choice but to be yes. whatever it is you need. Yes. Yes, that's good, sis. That's good. And so I think that this this lifetime is really teaching us uh to be solely dependent on ourselves and to be the leader, you know, and not the um the carrier in a sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not 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 the carrier, but the leader. And you know, and leading in a way that's going to allow us to effectively carry if we should so need to. And for real, for real, if, if we do it, if we do it really, really well, we'll be able to teach those around us as the mother how to carry their own shit so that we are all in the position of carrying <clears throat> our own weight. Yep. You know? And then return being being even more effective to each other. Yeah. You know? And so um, I thank you for, for taking a moment to come on and to pop on my baby and this live. And what I want, before I close it, I want to take us out in this song uh, that I've been talking about. And so if you want to stay on with me as we, you know, take a few minutes to be in the energy of Music Nancy and in worship. Unto our I son. love Music Nancy. You know that. Yes, I love yes. it. So... <laughs> For those of you uh, who want to join us as we close out, I feel like we've said, honestly, everything uh, that needed to be said. Uh, my message to you guys has, has, is just very simple. Um, as you pour out and release um, the things that need to go as we come into this uh, new moon in Gemini on the 10th and, and solar eclipse, um, that is happening at the North Node. I truly hope that you guys have been really getting yourselves in the position to really be able to identify who you're going to see in the mirror as the fall clears. Who you're going to be, what you're going to feel like, what you're going to build on behalf of yourself, what you're going to sound like, what, what, what wisdom are you going to impart what is your communication going to be? What communication are you going to demand? You know, I, that is my message to you guys. And while you are in the waiting for the fog to clear, while you are in the waiting of yourself, I encourage you guys to be in the worship unto yourself. It's not about, it's not about you having to wait. Is about what you are doing in the waiting of who you are becoming. What are you doing in the waiting as you ascend from yourself? And as we as we channel and journey into uh, the element of music, Nancy, I encourage you guys to come to center as we close out this week's music speech. Uh, and that these words resonate and speak to you and that you are able to find yourself in the song uh, and that you truly see that the only person and being that you truly need to wait on is yourself. Okay? Okay. Okay.
wait on the line. Just wait on yourself, y'all. It's what you do in the waiting. So wait, I You've tasted the goodness of yourself. You've trusted the promise that you've given yourself. All you got to do is wait. <laughs> all you got to do is wait for you to come through for you. That's all you got to do is wait. Trust in the promise that you gave yourself and wait on the light. Wait on the light. She will renew your strength. So wait, I say, wait on the light. Wait on the light. She will renew your strength. So wait, I say. Just wait, y'all. Just wait. The mother will renew your strength to wait as you show up for yourself. She will renew Worship while you wait. Edify yourself while you wait. Validate yourself while you wait. Affirm yourself while you wait. Just wait on the light, y'all. While you're in the waiting of you, worship thyself. These are the affirmations that you tell yourself. <laughs> These are the things that happen when you wait. Listen. They that wait on thyself, their strength shall be renewed. Just wait, y'all. Just wait on yourself to come through for yourself. This is what happens when you wait on yourself. That's what happens when you wait. You get a little stronger. That's what happens when you wait. 
you just get a little stronger. You get a little wiser. You get a little more powerful. You get a little more strength. You get a little bit more vision, a little bit more clarity. Wait on the light, she shall renew your strength. So wait, I say, wait on the light, wait on the light, she will renew your strength. So wait, I say, wait on the light. Speak to your heart, speak to your ambition, speak to who you're becoming, speak to who you've been, thank, thank, thank yourself for where you brought yourself from, and while you're in the waiting, while you're in the waiting of who you're becoming, worship because provision is coming, renewed strength is coming, victory is coming. It's in the worship. It's in the worship of yourself. It's in what you do while you're waiting. Just wait, just wait. While I'm waiting, while I'm worship waiting, I'll be worshiping. While I'm waiting, I'll be worshiping. It's about what you do when you wait. Why complain? When you can praise, when you can be grateful, when you can worship yourself. When you can reassure yourself, when you can affirm you yourself. So instead of complaining, I don't need to start praising. Instead of complaining. I should. In the middle of the storm, y'all, whatever storm you find yourself in, while you're waiting, be praised. Give praise unto yourself. Worship unto yourself. While you're in the waiting of who you're becoming, give worship unto yourself. And y'all have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful night, y'all. 
a beautiful night while you're in the waiting for you to show up for you. Peace, everybody. And thank y'all for joining me for another episode of Tuesday's Tea. Bye.